Episode 1 of Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 begins with a young Sugiri Gitu reflecting on his work as a young Jujutsu sorcerer while exorcising and absorbing a cursed spirit. Afterwards, a woman explains some Jujutsu sorcerers' missions. It involves them investigating a former restaurant chain president's home since it's haunted. Mei and a young Yudaheim enter the residence. They split up once they get deeper into the place. Yudaheim checks several locations for any strange activity and finds a group of rodents in one room. She exits and bumps into Mei. Yudaheim says this floor doesn't look familiar despite Mei saying she traversed this floor three times. Mei theorizes they're inside the cursed spirit's barrier. Mei argues this is how the spirit killed its victims. They must escape the barrier to murder the cursed spirit, so Yudaheim conjures a brilliant scheme that'll allow them to free themselves from the spirit's grasp. Yudaheim proceeds with the plan and bumps into a young Satoru Goju. Satoru belittles Yudaheim for being scared as the cursed spirit finally reveals itself. Geto and a young Shoko arrive, and Yudaheim's happy to see her. Yudaheim's surprised it's been two days already, but Satoru informs her that the spirit must have the power to alternate time. May ask Shoko, Geto, and Satoru if they handled the veil issue. The group gets scolded by a young Mazumichi for the veil, and Satoru comes forward and apologizes for forgetting. Satoru and his friends visit a basketball court. Satoru shares his thoughts about setting up veils since the populace can't see cursed spirits or cursed techniques. Geto argues it's important to keep the populace calm since it discourages the cursed spirits. Gojo argues that it's exhausting to look after weak humans while Geto claims Jujutsu exists to protect non-sorcerers. Before they get into a physical confrontation, Mazumichi enters the room and assigns them a new mission. Mazumichi tells the boys their mission has two goals. One involves the Star Plasma Vessel, a girl compatible with Tenjin. They must escort and erase her. One of them asks Mazumichi if this is about renewing Tengen's technique and Mazumichi states Tengen possesses an immortality curse technique but not to confuse it with eternal youth. Further, Mazumichi states that once Tengen reaches a specific age the curse technique begins rewriting his body. Thus, Tengen will cease being human and lose his will. If that were to happen, Tengen would no longer be able to supply the Jujutsu schools, society, and the assistant supervisor's barrier techniques with power. Furthermore, they won't be able to maintain security or clean up after missions. Tengen could also become a dangerous threat. This is why every 500 years, he locates the Star Plasma Vessel to assimilate with them and overwrite the information on their body. This will assist him in resetting his curse technique back to zero. Mazumichi tells the boys the curse user group Q and the Time Vessel Association are after the Star Plasma Vessel. The curse user group wants to upend society through Tengen's rampage. As for the Time Vessel Association, they worship Tenjin like a god. Further, Mazumichi explains Tenjin vows to assimilate with the girl in two days, so Gojo and Ghetto must protect and ensure she reaches Tenjin in the time frame. After grabbing drinks, Satoru wonders why the Time Vessel Association wants to kill the girl. Ghetto claims they want to kill the girl to maintain Tenjin's purity. Ghetto says they should be more concerned about the curse user group Q. He tells Satoru not to be full of himself. Geto arrives at the girl's door, but an explosion occurs, resulting in her jumping off the building. Geto rescues the girl and realizes this was a stunt caused by a member of Cursed Group Q. A member confronts Satoru, and Satoru plans to show him no mercy. Meanwhile, two men discuss the situation from a skyscraper. He asks his ally Fushiguro if he wants to participate in the Star Plasma Vessel scheme, and the episode concludes with him gladly accepting the offer.